Now Chris, unlike the comics, with Tom Hardy's character, Bane, there is not gonna be Venom, is there? Mm. Yeah, you wish. Tom Hardy is officially starring in his first Marvel movie come this October. After appearing in one of the best DC film franchises of all time. It's also where he played one of Batman's last villains of the Dark Knight trilogy, Bane. And though tons of people, including myself, loved his performance in that, there was a bunch of other people that didn't like it. So many of them were going, Some would even go as so far to say that the older one was better than him. And step on it. Okay, but today, we're straying away from the age-old question of who played who better, and just straight up pitting the characters themselves against each other. This is to see who would win in a fight between the roided up Bane from Batman and Robin, and the slightly less roided up Bane from the Dark Knight trilogy. So this is not a comparison between the two films and the two actors from a filmmaking standpoint. I mean absolutely no disrespect to any of these guys, especially the one from 1997 who already unfortunately passed. Rest in peace. So whatever I say towards his character is towards the character he was playing. The character of Bane from Batman and Robin, not him himself. I mean no offense to him. I am not speaking ill of the dead. La 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 you sick prick you have no soul making fun of a dead guy you fa- We're splitting each of these guys stats into strength, speed, intellect, endurance, and abilities. So first section's up and it's probably the most predictable one. Now I know there are a lot of Christopher Nolan fans out there that's probably watching this, but Tom Hardy's Bane gets demolished in this section. I'm not saying Robert Swenson's version was better than Hardy's at all, or that Hardy's was terrible. I wouldn't even say Swenson's character was even a character in that movie. I already prefaced this earlier, but every single versus video I make, there's always those comments where my, 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 my. Just cause it's kinda one-sided in this section, doesn't mean the one from The Dark Knight Rises wouldn't put up a challenge. Just cause he wasn't on Venom, doesn't mean he wasn't super tough. Like, he broke Batman's supposedly bulletproof mask, which was composed of strong graphite lined with Kevlar. That takes up to nearly two tons of force to crack. And further in the movie, when he gets enraged at Batman for messing with his mask, he makes a huge crater on the limestone pillars right there. So at his peak, when he's completely going berserk, he could throw jabs at over two tons. That's basically getting hit by two trucks left and right. I'm not joking. If Batman wasn't wearing any armor in this scene, or even in this scene, this would be his head. <laughs> it's a giraffe! <laughs> as impressive as all that is, the juice that Swenson's Bane was on just made him a much stronger person. As opposed to Hardy's character, he actually had a mask that fed a substance called Venom into him which was what gave him his super strength. The guy from 2012 also had a mask, but it wasn't what gave him the power to punch through bulletproof masks. That was just pure training. Hardy's mask actually fed him anesthetics that kept him from feeling the pain he endured from his past. And that power difference does indeed show. Batman and Robin's ugh. Batman and Robin's version never really punched a hole on the side of a wall, but he was able to rip out an entire wall by just leaning backwards. He wasn't even flexing, I don't think, pushing up to two and a half tons of force without even trying. And that's higher than Hardy's when he's mad. Swenson's yanked the thing off like he was just getting ready to shoot an Old Spice commercial. He also made an even bigger crater through concrete with his feet than Hardy's did against limestone. And that's from the floor. That's some pretty densely packed stuff right there. On top of that, he also made a group of six guys fly like some 20, 30 feet by simply lifting up his arms. I mean, two of them were standing on a seesaw and he just stomped on it to make him go flying. So maybe that's why they went up so high. But only two dudes were on there. Where did these guys come from? Why are they in the air? He had to have thrown the rest of them with just his arms, exerting over 1,500 pounds with just a simple stretch. That's not to act like the Dark Knight Rises Bane didn't do anything. He broke Batman's back, and every punch he landed on Batman made me feel like he should have just committed seppuku to end his suffering. 
But none of that really matters when 1997's Bane was sending people across the room just by walking and moving around. And we still weren't shown his max at all really. I mean he tried hitting steel, but he was well away from even making a dent on that thing. Swenson takes home the first point. As strong as the bigger Bane was, seeing him move around was as interesting as watching paint dry. He was incredibly slow in all of his movements. Just look at him. the fastest guy out there either. He's already over there, yo. But he was at least competent at fighting. He clearly knew some form of martial arts. He was much faster at swinging when things got real when compared to the older one. In the Dark Knight trilogy, Bane was a trained member of the League of Shadows, the same group of ninjas that made Batman such a great fighter. Swenson's was a nobody from jail. Sure, he got in there for murder, but he had to have used a knife for that or something. He looked like he could barely tackle a bagel. He didn't know how to fight or use his ridiculous strength with any sort of efficiency. Maybe it was his size or something. Maybe just because of the fact that he was so huge, he just wasn't as naturally agile and flexible as opposed to Hardy's. The larger your muscles are, the more resistance you'd encounter. On that note, Hardy obviously takes this one. Okay, the fact that I'm even comparing these two in terms of what goes on in their heads is an insult to the character of Bane and the entire DC Universe. In the original source material, Bane was not as smart as Batman, but he was still highly intelligent. And his mind combined with his body was what made him so dangerous. In Nolan's movies, he was a master tactician and a military extremist. He knew exactly how things worked. He had access to virtually an unlimited supply of secretive black ops information. He knew how to break people from the inside. And above all else, he knew how to speak. This Bane didn't know how to utter a single word as soon as that venom got inside of him. He didn't even know how to punch correctly. Like, if your punch is as powerful as a wrecking ball, you could basically punch his head clean off. But for some reason, he just decides to give him a little tap on the head that's not even the worst of it. Let's go back to when he ripped out that wall. But let me shed some context into this scene. So the objective here is for Poison Ivy and Bane to break out Mr. Freeze out of jail. Bane is clearly there to be extra muscle and retrieve Freeze's equipment from the lockup. So when Ivy meets up with Freeze, we see that Bane has just broken through the wall on the opposite side of the building. We know this because 20 seconds later, he's shown running through the dimly lit hallways. But the very next shot, literally the next frame after it shows him breaking in on the other side of the building, we see him standing right outside the cell door, staring blankly at the camera. And you're just like, you what? I'm not making this up. I couldn't if I wanted to. Bane is standing right over there, right outside the door. And in the very next shot, he's back all the way across the building, running through the hallways. How did they screw this up? That was shot, edited, and previewed by the director. You can call that bad filmmaking, terrible directing, lack of communication, but in the context of this video, we gotta take it as it is in the universe of Batman and Robin's timeline. And that just furthers the idea that this Bane is as smart as a bag of hammers. He broke through the walls of the prison lockup where Mr. Freeze's equipment were, forgot what he was supposed to do, went all the way across the hallways to ask Poison Ivy what was he supposed to do, saw her through the cell door with Mr. Freeze, immediately remembered, Oh yeah, I gotta get the toys. And ran all the way back across the hall to the prison lockup where Mr. Freeze's stuff were left behind, threw them in a little metal cart, took a new hallway route where there were was an actual lock he had to break through this time where there were multiple heavily armed guards and made it all the way back to Poison Ivy and Freeze. Hey, what flavor is the green? Bane in this film is nothing but a brainless muscle head that only does what he's told. He doesn't think, 
He just does. If you don't tell him what to do, he won't do anything. He's a follower. 2012's Bane was very much a leader. He was what Batman was supposed to be had he stayed with the League of Shadows. An extremely intelligent, fearless warrior. One who could see 20 steps ahead of their opponents. He had his own goons, while this Bane was a goon. And that speaks volumes. This section is nowhere near a tie. Tom Hardy's Bane is light years more intelligent than the bumbling buffoon from 1997. Now you'd think endurance and strength would go hand in hand with these sort of things. And to some extent, you'd be right. Being able to exert a large amount of force means they'd be able to take in the same amount. And both of these guys can soak in a lot of blows before they start feeling any real sort of pain. The Dark Knight Trilogy's version took heavy punches with such bassy sound effects that made you go... <laughs> And Swenson's Bane fell over 700 feet into the ocean. Yeah, it was water, but from that high up, he should be freaking mashed potatoes when he hit the surface. That's too high up for any survival. His body was tanking 7.4 tons of force when he should have went splat. This whole scene doesn't really make sense, cause that mean Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze would basically be feeling about the same exact force. But then that wouldn't make sense either. If they could take in 7.4 tons of force, they could exert 7.4 tons of force. Which means both Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze were both as strong as Ben Affleck's Batman. Not only does this make no logical sense, but Swenson's Bane's durability is just flat out incredibly inconsistent throughout the entire movie. Like 20 minutes later, he just dies from getting hit by a 10 pound rod against his head. Okay, he didn't die. But I mean, if your whole body can withstand the crushing weight of 7 tons, 10 pounds should feel like a flu shot to you. Some of you out there are probably thinking, Well, you know, the head is supposed to be the most sensitive part of the body. It's where the brain is. He landed feet first, so it makes sense. Alright. No. That is not how it works. Sure, the impact would be much more concentrated towards his head here, but energy is never created or destroyed. So once he made contact with the water as he was falling, the entirety of those seven tons were distributed throughout his body. Meaning his brain would have ended up sloshing around his skull much more violently than when this tin rod touched his forehead. <laughs> So this makes no sense. Him surviving a fall like that, but getting knocked out by this, just cancels out what little logical endurance feat there was left. The contradiction is so bad, it's quite impressive actually. We can't really give him any points for surviving this, if he can't even stay woke from this. So instead, let's focus on their endurance in their weakened state. By that, I mean how well they can adapt to their situation when their masks are damaged. Let's look at Bane from The Dark Knight Rises again. We see that when the tubings on his mask are disconnected, the anesthetic that's being pumped in becomes less and less effective, because not all of it is perfectly flowing into his body. But he does have a brief 30 second adrenaline rush where he just goes completely nuts on the guy he's after before he truly goes down. Swinging faster than he ever has before. If you take out the tubings on this one, he reverts to his true form in less than half a second. The Dark Knight Rises Bane is going to town on him right now. Hardy's Bane was not just great at planning things out, he also knew how to adapt to his surroundings. Through his training with the League of Shadows, he was able to hone in on his senses to fight people in hard to see areas. He even countered all the tricks and gadgets Batman tried to use on him. The only real ability the other Bane has over this one is the access to super strength through the Venom drug, which he already earned a point for like 8 minutes ago. So he's not getting extra credit this time around. In reality, this section of the video is more of a melding of all the last ones. That's why this section is here. 
It's not the abilities of the 90s Bane we're looking at, because that's just non-existent. We're looking at his inabilities. He doesn't know how to fight, he doesn't know how to talk, he doesn't know how to do anything on his own. He even got dropped by George Clooney. How? You're four times his size! It's his inability to use his advantage to an advantage that's basically earning him negative points at this point. He's got immense strength. Strength that's far greater than that of Hardy's Banes possibly could be, thanks to the Venom drug. But he wouldn't use it properly. Like, <laughs> he has the power to punch people's heads clean off, or at least knock them out into a coma with a single punch. And Robin just gets up after 10 seconds, as if he just hit his head on an open cabinet door. The only two signs of thinking he showed was when he was shown smashing on the seesaw from earlier, smashing this log to open the door, smashing the concrete for poison ivy, and smashing this metal pole into Batman. And for some reason, even though I'm describing the actions of Bane, I sound like I'm describing the inside thinking of a prehistoric caveman. Tom Hardy's Bane would easily spot his weakness almost instantaneously and move around to exploit it with ease using the darkness around as his ally and getting the drop on him. Either that, or he'd just punch him really hard in the head and he'd go down just as easy cause well, you know. Tom Hardy takes the last point. Here is the scoreboard with the end results. Really, this matchup would be over in under a minute. The Dark Knight Rises Bane's speed and analytical thinking trumps anything and everything Swenson's Bane could throw at him. He's a much better fighter, he's much more adaptive to his environments, and he has shown to be much more consistently resistant to all types of attacks. It'd only take him two seconds for him to figure out the other Bane's weakness, and he just cut the Venom circulation just like that. And he'd most likely break the other Bane's back once he reverts back to his smaller self. 1997's wouldn't even think about going for the other one's weakness because he just doesn't think at all. I'm not even sure if he'd do anything in this battle. He needed Poison Ivy to tell him what to do throughout his film. So he'd probably just stand there as a dope like, I like chocolate. Yeah. This fight would be over before it even started. The winner is Tom Hardy's Bane. When Gotham is ashes, you have my permission to die. You can be responsible for the next versus video by letting me know in the comment section of who you would want to see placed in a mirror matchup. So don't be shy, go on and leave your thoughts down below. And hey, while you're at it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And for more of my videos, just click right here.